Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Different, and welcome to Different World. And for today's vlog, I'm very excited because I'm going to be sharing with you all my interview I did with the host of Grace for Purpose podcast, Miss Juanita Harrison. I had a very, very good time talking with her about my new book, What Is a Controversial Paradigm Shift, as well as my new business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. And uh, we had these conversations back in of October 2021. And um, I'm very excited to share with you all, you know, our conversation and talking about bringing social awareness to society, you know, with my product, you know, my new book, What If a Controversial uh, Paradigm Shift. So um, without further ado, I don't want to hold you guys up too much longer. You know how I do get straight into it. So um, check out the clip, the audio clip, and uh, I'll come back on and give you guys some more info on what's going on in different world. So here it is. Check it out. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in again to the Grace for Purpose podcast. We have a special guest on tonight, Different Caldwell. I'm super excited for you guys to hear her story. We're going to talk about her book, her journey as being an entrepreneur, and some more things. So she is an author. She's a CEO and a motivational speaker from Houston, Texas. Different, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, what's up, Juanita? Hey, everybody out there. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Yeah, um, everybody like out there who, like I should say, my name is different, spelled D-I-S-E-N-R-T. And thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm so happy to be here and just to talk with you, you know, about my life, my book, and everything that I got going on. Thank you for having me. Definitely. We really appreciate you being here tonight. So you did mention your book. So tell us the title of your book and what was the in inspiration behind the concept of your book? Okay, yeah. Well, my book is called What If? And the subtitle is A, a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And I guess um, talking to answer your question about what inspired the book, you have to go back, you know, a little bit to you know, my past as well as with, with the present and just give you guys a little background about me. Um, like she this one of you said, I grew up in Houston, you know, I'm 30 years old. Um, coming up, I had a pretty good upbringing up until the time I was around 11 years old. And then just ended up on hard times with me and my family, basically ended up on the streets and stayed like that for three years. And um, by the time I was 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative. And for six, the first six months, none of my family members knew where I was. Okay. And, Within those six months I spent trying to come home, I found out that in the state of Texas, if you know, you age out of the uh, foster care system, they would pay for your tuition fee waiver, the full ride free. And so right then and there, you know, all those years, you know, three years spending on the street, you know, hustling and watching people, I, you know, a light bulb went off in my head. You know, I was trying to keep my food smarts to elevate my food smarts and, you know, decided to stay in CPS rather than, you know, go home. When my family did find out where I finally was, I stayed. Okay. I told them I was going to stay, <clears throat> basically. When they did find out where I was, I told them I was going to stay. Okay. And so I did that, and uh, since the next four years, we foster sick here, you know, moving around. And, you know, by the time I was 18 years old, I had that, you know, full free ride to uh, the college of my choice, which is San Francisco State University. So shout out to the Bearcats out there in Huntsville, Texas. Um, and spent my time there. Uh, I was able to start my own student founding organization titled Head Forward. And whereas that's where I got started, you know, with my motivational speaking, sort of, if you will. Um, okay. There we, we spent time going to different high schools, talking about the importance of education. We also had other parts of the, you know, team, you know, volunteering and education, if you will. <clears throat> And so that's kind of where the little seed, you know, was planted, if you will. To start you know. doing the motivational speaking. Okay. okay. Is that... You know, got the opportunity to, to, you know, join the organization, you know, by Kai a business attorney, as well okay. as you know, I was abroad. I went to Kim Young University, and within that experience itself, got to travel to eight other different countries. Nice. So, although, you know, I had a, a, a tragic upbringing, if you will, or, you know, a traumatized upbringing, you know, God bless me, you know, he kept me in the palm of his hand all the way through it. Definitely. And still, it still is. And so, you know, no matter, you know, how my story sounds, I'm going to start out and sound so sad, but, you know, that it's ending in triumph. You know, it turned like, around. Right. Yeah. Definitely. And so you don't always hear that. Sometimes we hear where people are stuck in just the cycle of, of 
victimization, if that makes sense. Oh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to address that. You did the research to see what benefits were, were there for you coming out of that tragic situation. And I can only imagine how many people don't know that that option is available to to get a free ride. I'm not going to find out. I would have went, they found where I was, I would have went back home. But that, like, it was, like I said, God's plan, God's grace, and, and such. And because of that, now, you know, I have a degree, my bachelor's in international business, two minors in economics and business okay. communication my master's degree in entrepreneurship and I'm also a Texas real estate agent. Okay. And so and as well as I'm an avid travel, I've traveled all over the world. Right. So okay. God's grace right now. I'm just a living example, living proof. Definitely. That's who I am if you that's what different who different is. And so with all that being said, you know, all into my adulthood having all these accomplishments and doing all these great things. You would think, you know, I got that perfect life. You know, I'm, I'm going, I had a, a tough upbringing. You know, I'm living a good life, but yet and still, you know, on the inside, I'm, I'm, I'm damaged. I'm, I'm destroyed. Okay. And so, um, with all that being said, even though I look good on the outside, I was dying on the inside. So have and internal it, healing that you have to go through. Internal, oh yeah, girl, I had a coming to Jesus, though Jesus, a moment that they say, you know. Um, to where a lot of my childhood issues and, and traumatizations came up with into my adulthood and to the okay. point to where, you know, it was, it was to where, well, I guess, I, how can I put it, coming up in that upbringing where you were taught, you know, or not taught, if you will, that chaos is normal. And so okay. for me, you know, spending three years on the streets, you know, from pillow to post, basically sleeping everywhere, you know, shelters, cars, I even slept in the crack house at one point. Okay. And, and so that type of traumatization and, and becoming normal to you and then getting taken out of that setting, I, I placed some thoughts here. I was actually placed in a really good home. Mm-hmm. Nice food. However, for me, chaos was normal. And so. Great. So that's a battle that you're fighting. Leaving chaos to normalcy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when I got taken out of that situation into a totally different environment, it didn't feel real to me. It didn't seem normal to me. So for me, it felt too good to be true. And so I I, I got used to sabotaging my own my own good things. And so that became a pattern that 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 transition all into my okay. to that pattern. I'm scared of pattern. Excuse me. <laughs> pattern. It was you know affecting all the good things that, and opportunities that I had going for me as far mm-hmm. as career. And so it got to the point to where I messed up a really, really good opportunity that I'm still rooting about to this day and, and led to me to where, you know, I faced ugly truth about myself that I need okay. to go and fix these issues. Okay. You know, so things. how do you know what you need to, to fix sometimes until you... Oh, I, I dismiss that notion you know, right. that, that most of us Black people have felt that Black people don't do therapy, mm-hmm. you know, come from an environment where we were taught you know what goes on in this house stays in this stays house. Stays in the house. You, know, you don't talk about your issues, so you come up, you grow up feeling ashamed about it, and you're not talking about it, and you know right. coming up with all these excuses. Only to be, I can't afford it. I don't need therapy. You know what I need, like sitting on somebody's couch talking about my problems. Right. And so it what like I said, facing the ugly truth, and you know getting real with myself and accepting the fact that you know to hell with all. Uh, <laughs> With all that, um, <laughs> this is me. Like I said, which is what you. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> um, get all that. Um, I'm just. I'm gonna go fix my issue. I'm gonna get real with myself. I'm not gonna be ashamed about it. Anymore. I'm gonna talk about it. And, and sure. Got kind of a problem with it. Oh well. And so, I went to therapy. You know. Okay. And, and so now, consecutively, at first I was spotty with. I'm not gonna lie. I was spotty with it, but I got serious about it too. Two years ago, just you know, consistent with it, and I'm very proud of myself of it. Okay. And I tell anybody out there listening, you know, who, who's in that same boat, who I, I'm still dealing with it. You, I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress. Sure. I'm dealing with depression. To this Healing day. is a journey. It's not. It's it's, it's not. not yeah. Even when you're dead and gone, you're still gonna be have have leave people behind that has to deal with it. They have to body. heal from so, it, right? It's, it's everlasting, if you will. Definitely. However, when like 
I said, facing that ugly truth by myself and understanding that what I went through as a child, it wasn't my fault. Mm-hmm. However, when it was my problem. And that's just the fact about it. That's how life works. It's not your fault. But somehow Accountability is... Exactly. <laughs> it's the only and, way we grow, right? And even if you were the cause of the problem, it's still on you to fix it. Right. And so your childhood trauma, any relationship trauma, mm-hmm. your adult trauma, it's on you to fix it. Definitely. You're the one that's thinking about it. It's you the one that's, you know, hurting. Yeah. Not nobody else will like how you think they should. It's you. So Definitely. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing for the past two years. Okay. Shout out to my therapist. He was part of this project as well because he was the one, you know, who helped set everything in motion. As, you know, like God, he sent everybody who was supposed to be you know, in your life, right? Yeah. And so with him encouraging me to, you know, take the negatives and turn it into the positives and just get back to, you know, do the things that I really truly love. Which was one of them was writing and journaling. Okay. Um, and so, um, doing so, and writing and doodling and writing little positive affirmations and stuff and just manifestations. I'm a big believer, in, you know, in the power of manifestations, the laws of attraction and the laws of karma and just doing right by people and mm-hmm. not positive. I love doing, you know, chakra healing and meditation. Uh, cause my business is called Third Eye ENT for a reason. So, okay. Spiritually in tune, if you will. Not a religious person, but I love to be, you know, spiritually. I had to lose my religion in order to gain, you know, my relationship with God. Okay. Just so for me, I'm not out there to get religious on anybody out there or disrespect anybody's religion. That's not definitely, what I'm definitely. We understand that. For me, this is what works for different. And so, okay. um, that's just how I operate. And okay. Doing so, getting myself together and getting real with myself and being consistent with that journaling and, and doodling, as well as being stuck in the house for the pandemic. Okay. <laughs> this is all happening during the pandemic. Um, sure. Uh, and then May 25th, 2020 happens, the death of George Floyd. Right. In Texas, I grew up in the fifth ward, but I also spent some time in third ward, like I said, moving around as a child. Um, we spent some time in Third World, where George Floyd is from. Okay. And so being right down the street, um, of course, you know, I want to get involved in the protests and have my voice heard, and even attend this funeral, you know, even have my nephew get involved and have him help him understand what's going on because he's scared, you know. Sure. He sees the police, he's like, oh, no, you got to, you know, get right, you know. He, and so I try to, you know, explain to him, you know, what's going on, don't be afraid, mm-hmm. what's going on, you know, such and such. So when that time comes to, you know, just, you know, go to his funeral, I know it may seem like I was all talk and, no, and bark, and, and I had no bark. And the reason why, it wasn't that, oh, I, you know, got cold feet. It was that, you know, I wanted my voice to be heard, not just in that moment in time, but long after I'm gone. Sure. Okay. So, so this is where it did This is where everything comes to head. You comes to tie in. in. Okay. What, what transpired me as well as a long time ago being a child when I was 13 I prayed and asked God allow me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create generational wealth for my family definitely some way some power, allow me to be that way be that okay. way whichever way you bring it to me how it comes whichever way it comes Lord I'll take it and so that prayer long, being prayed a long time ago would come in the head manifestation and as well as, like I said, being locked up in the house and just having nothing else to do. And okay. Asking and talking with God, this is what he would show me. He would send me little dreams, little premonitions, you know, um, watching TV or talking with people. One time I was watching a movie, you know, to help, I don't know if I uh, name drop or anything, and I apologize if I can. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I got uh, Davis and Octavia Spencer, even in the song. I know okay. My owner, she expressed regret for uh, doing that big movie. However, she, her role has inspired me to do this book. You know, those three women having the courage to talk about the issue that was so taboo in the time and knowing sure. what they were doing, but yet still have the courage to do something about it. Sure. That inspired me. And so, whether okay. she read it or not, I want her to know if she ever hears this. That she's <laughs> inspired. <laughs> Canada the scene, so her work wasn't in vain, and so we have no regret about what she did, because look at what came of it. 
don't expect to receive no no type of you know conversation <laughs> <laughs> shout out <laughs> You have a, a lot of different things that have kind of inspired you yes, towards yes. writing this book. So let me ask you: so your book is it a nonfiction or a fiction book? Which nonfiction, however, it does use controversial deaths and events that are very true and have occurred. Okay. And so, um, in, in a sense of nonfiction, though, it, it's a race. Only thing okay. that is different is a race rule reversal. We're asking the question. What if this happens to white people instead of black people? Okay. It's basically, rudimentary form, basic, basic question. What if this happened to black people instead of white people? Sure. Um, so, in tw- June, this, I started writing this June 2020, and I finished December 2020. And um, before I go any further with uh, the book, uh, What If Controversial Paradigm Ship, I must say, on this disclosure, this book was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism in America, and, and it's done through graphic but provocative illustrations. Um, it also entails on controversial deaths and events that I've stated before. Um, like I said, it, it's just basically a race role reversal. It's actually sure. White folks instead of black folks in the way that I've constructed this is set up in four main categorized paradigm shifts. Hyper, excuse me, historical, precedent, no, 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 I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, historical, political, precedent, then hypothetical. I always get confused. Okay, so who would you say, like, who would you say that the intended audience for your book? So my target audience is uh, adults from the ages 18 to 35, uh, the African American community. Okay. Um, I did a test market analysis, and this is where I tested high end. These four categorized people, you know, um, the African American community, of course, you know, women. It tested very high with men, but you know, women, we run the world, so we're going to run in high numbers as well. Okay. Uh, as well as people who care about social issues, okay. such as justice and social awareness and, you know, systemic racism. And so those are my target audience. Okay. Those okay. Those, issues, those age ranges, uh, women and men, but, you know, with, with women, you know, we always test higher, so don't go where the money resides, which we got the power, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like it's changing, everybody, though. Everybody who, also, not just that, anybody who, who's willing to listen and glad to be open-minded, even right. for those who, want, who just want to be nosy, let me go keep this what you're talking about. Anybody right. who's willing to listen, basically, but if you ask the question, who's my target audience, I know who they are. And you know who it's intended for. And you know, as a as an author, that's important research that you do is to figure out I'm who you're. I'm more than just an author, honey. Let me that, just say that. Okay. I'm more than just one option. Okay. Definitely. This world, you come and learn, you will see. Um, and and like I said, having those degrees, and I was actually, you know, coming coming up, starting up in corporate world. Mm-hmm. If you will. I call it corporate world. I started off in oil and, and now ended up in real estate. Okay. But just you know, tricks and trades and, you know, how to do Definitely. your research homework before you really dive into something that you're doing. Into anything, I mean, right? You ask it, I, I, I know you have that question written for me, so I'm going to say the answer for you later. What's my advice? Because mm-hmm. that's one, like right off the top, you know, you said you did a market analysis, and most people, as authors, you don't think that that's important to do, but oh, it's, no, so no, important. No. it's so you important. It's so important to do. Good, for me, it's not, and I'm going to take this time because I've learned this from my mentor who recently passed away from COVID. Oh, um, no, okay. Ms. Uh, Salisbury's rest in peace to him. What he taught me is. In order to be the best and whatever it is you want to do, what you feel it is in life that you want to do, you have to do the shit. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You got to do the stuff that your opponent won't do. Definitely. Anything that your opponent won't do, you got to be that person that's going to do it. That's what's going to make you the best of the best. And so when I wrote this book, like I said, when I prayed, I not only just prayed to pray, oh, just give me some so I can tell mm-hmm. what you it was more than just having my voice being heard. It wasn't just breaking a generation of person. Sure. Well, it's more than that. And so when I pray, I pray specific prayers and what I want in life and what I want to receive. Not just with this book, just how I am specifically when I pray and get along with God. Definitely. And so when I did that, and when I asked, when I, when I prayed for this book, 
this is what I pray for. To, okay. You know, not only just, just to do this, but even in such as so with the powers of you know manifestation with this book and and, and saying, oh, I'm just going to be. This is going to be my first book. This is not only just going to be my first book. I'm writing the first number one bestseller. My book, That's my crazy. first book is going to be the number one bestseller. And so, taking all that advice and being serious about what it is I'm doing, I'm not just. This is not just this is my. This is not just my first book. My first book is going to be the number one bestseller. Definitely. You have to talk to yourself that way. I think putting that out there, that's what helps you to do the work to make it happen. You have to do the work to make it happen. But what work, how do you know what to do if you don't know what you're trying to achieve, right? So that would just bring me to another question. So as far as publishing your book, did you self-publish your book or did you go through a publishing company? No, no, no. Let me tell you another funny story of God's plan, how he works, man. Um, in the process, you know, writing a book um, and, and joining groups on Facebook, um, I wrote a real little quick rinky dink, you know, message on Facebook, you know, about I'll, most I can remember about that question, it was something, something, 20, 20, 21, 2133 words that okay. I needed to check. And it was just a little short book and be done. And when I posted that, as soon as I posted that, mm-hmm. people started ribbing me. Oh, you got to be scared. You can't be serious. Okay. Like, you they're all the negative came flooding in, and I took it in stride. I sure. thank you for your comments, kept, kept the professions. Sure. Kept professions. And 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 of all out of all the you know negative comments, no positive comments mm-hmm. came from that little post. Okay. <laughs> one, only one. Okay. Only one. I was in Korea. They call me Hana, and that means there is only one. Okay. So for different goals, that's what they call me Hana. There is only one. So there was only one, Yuhana. Yuhana, only the only one person responded to my post. And they was like, well, I'm not going to judge this or whatever. And basically, I'm not going to judge this, but just DM me. DM me sure. Like, oh, How do you know what it is unless you read it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, this, yeah, basically, she's like, I'm not going to judge you right off the bat, but let me see what you're talking about. Okay. And so I reached out to this person, you know, we get to rapping. I send her, you know, the rough manuscript. And uh, my little visual edits and how I'm seeing the, the visual illustrations, everything. And um, she reads it and falls in love with it. She calls me like 30 minutes later. And okay. She's like, girl, what you, girl, hold up. She's from Atlanta. She lives in Atlanta. She's okay. Me, girl, hold up. Wait a minute. You know, she's just, she got real, you know, homie with me. Sure. Like, I, I never met this woman before. She don't know me. I don't know her. But, you know, when she read, you know, what I was trying to do, it was like, she, she was like, okay. I sent her a message. Definitely. So and speaking to her, like, hey, pick this up, help this girl okay. out. Okay, okay. So she was like, yeah, we about to do something. You know, I'm a publisher. I'm mm-hmm. in my husband's company, and we publish books, and, you know, we help people, you know, new authors like yourself. You okay. Know, you know? She was like, first of all, you know, you look like a very, she told me, this is what she's telling me, you know, like a very formidable woman, you know, yourself. You know, you just need a little help, but this is your first time. Definitely. Oh, so, and it was. And she's like, okay. I know a person. I, I had another illustrator before this who flaked on me and, and made me have to, like, switch back dates because I was originally going to drop the book on Juneteenth. Okay. Okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah, it was on Juneteenth, you know, bombshell drop it, you know, however things, you know, change. And um, once I met with her, her name is Shalana Bush uh, of Bush Legacy Publishing. Um, she hooked me up with the author, the, excuse me, not the author, the illustrator of the book, Anastasia Arnold. Okay. And my God, like I said, it had to be God's plan for her. Out of all those negative comments that I read in her being Got one. one. <laughs> when she read it, she was like, yeah, girl, yeah, we don't, yeah. And um, from then on, she led me to other people coming and she introduced me uh, to the book designer as well as um, the word of mouth. At the, at the time, she found out about somebody else. Okay. Um, you know, the book trailer, and so, like I said, just God's plan. You know, her sending, him, sending me her, and through her, other people coming through, and just definitely me with her and Anastasia, and the trifecta we created. You know, with this book. Um, you know, I always say, you know, God bless Anastasia with the hands of gold because you know the way she, I, I drew out, I did a little trick and scratch of what I was seeing. And what she's, what I would do, I, you know, 
she would take it and just oh my gosh sure uh, and make it better <laughs> definitely so you okay so you gotta put yourself out there you got some negative yeah. feedback but you feedback, found but that one one that's all it takes one all it takes is one put yourself out there don't definitely. be afraid to face rejection it's going to happen accept it and definitely just understand we keep moving forward and keep you know putting your best foot forward sure and eventually you will be able to keep your labor and that's just you know how how it how it goes definitely so you have to anymore. persevere exactly and so with this book um and then her coming into play with it and, and bringing out a stash and all the other people um uh, everything comes ahead and then boom december 2020 happens let me tell you what happens then girlfriend Okay. So I'm done with the book. I finished everything. Uh, we got found the uh, illustrator. As far as writing goes, I'm not finished with the book, but I finished writing the book, and now I have an illustrator who's working on the illustrations, and um, everything's coming into play now. But uh, I talked with my lawyer in December 2020, and she reads my manuscript as far as like the the editorial wise, not not the picture wise, but the written wise, and she's like, I love it. I think it's going to do really well in sales yada 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 and asks this music question that just knocks flat back and she's like uh, but what's the name of your business and i'm like what do you mean what's the name of my I'm like, what this is um, mm-hmm. controversial paradigm shift and she's like no i don't think you understand in order to sell products to the public you have to have a business now of course i knew this but it all before the pandemic started i had other plans to start my business i wasn't ready to start my business right and i wasn't really starting my business with this um, and so I had to write then off from December to March 21, 2021, you know, learn the tricks and trades real fast in a hurry, you know, before I wanted to, about how to run my, my small business in Texas. Okay. And so um, within that time frame, just praying, like I said, being spiritually in tune and talking with God and, and talking and, and asking God what it is that I want. To, it's not, it's, like I said, so it's bigger than the book now. It's more about it's not, what am I going to do to the world? What, what's my brand going to be? Who am I right. going to influence? <laughs> yeah, so what am I truly going to be about? It's more than just the book. And so this is where it gets deeper, it gets serious. It's just more than just about systemic racism, just pushing people's buttons. It's more, you know, bigger than that. And so that's where, you know, it comes to, you know, what's your business, what's the model, what's the creed going to be about? And then I just say that it's going to be about, you know, bringing, you know, social awareness to society. Okay. Events, you know, which case as far as it entertains all at once. And that's what Third Eye Entertainment is about. You okay. Know, and as far as, you know, our motto goes, it's manifest, plan, prepare. I believe that. We believe that. In order for one to keep guaranteed success in life, Juanita, one must manifest like no other. Speak into existence things that they believe in their mm-hmm. heart of hearts and that they desire and that they're meant to have in life and don't ever stop doing so. Learn the laws of attractions and the powers Definitely. of the time, speaking things into existence. Learning to reprogram your mind and get rid of all that negative thoughts and things that have held you back from the past and the cool one. And once you start manifesting and start writing out even the manifestations, it comes with writing it and little notes to yourself constantly doing those affirmations and so when you manifest you move on to planning plan for what it is that you want to do in life not only right. but just planning and writing things out on paper uh, plan in, in 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 your finance planning your, you know, your spiritual or your you know your relationship wise and this then you move on to preparing okay that you are about to receive what I mean, not only from with preparing, you prepare, you know, physically. You know, if there's something that you don't like about yourself physically, go get that gym. It and that's if we go back to the accountability part, right? Yeah. <laughs> get gym. So if you need to fix your finances, go and start saving. Get your savings right. account. If you need to fix your you know, relationship, go mend those bridges. If you need to go get your mental health in check, go do that. You know, definitely, like said, definitely. Up and go fix my issues and once I did that this mm-hmm. is when it came with it you know my business and my, my book and okay so, you do that, manifest plan prepare you okay anything, you know you want to do my like, once you do that and once so, you get those three things down mm-hmm. so, so with that, I mm-hmm. it, um, we 
like I said, provide products and services. Uh, we also provide on the service side, like I said, motivational speaking. Okay. On topics and issues that are very taboo in society, today's society, such as injustice, systemic okay. racism. Um, we also talk about, like I said, mental health, suicide prevention, uh, especially in the black community, um, you know, financial health, uh, LGBTQ issues, and everything that's, you know, considered taboo and often sweeped under the rug, mm -hmm. or, you know, we turn to find eye to society. We talk about those issues here. Okay. Uh, in a different world. Uh, I also, on the entertainment side, I do, like I said, I travel a lot. Um, okay. I've been almost like 50 plus countries, just about, if you will. And so nice. on the travel side, I do a video and a blog. Okay. Um, as well as providing uh, expertise, if you will. And so I got a lot. I'm a, like I said, I'm a, board, I'm a woman of many has you know, more than just one option. Sure, so, I understand. I'm always one of those type of people that had a lot of, uh, I always have irons in the fire. And okay. So, um, that's what we do at Third Eye MTM with our first product being our book, What If? Controversial Paradigm Shift, that is, going to, that is now available uh, on our website at differenceworld.net. Okay. Well Google and Amazon.com. Okay, so we can associate you with the book. So I know I'm talking a lot, but it's, it's okay. a lot. Um, we sell merchandise in association with the book. Uh, you know, but however, it's not sold on Amazon or, or uh, Barnes and Noble. It's sold solely through our website, as well as including the Google packages. Um, as far and just as drop know, the website one more time. What's the website? Yeah, sure. Differencewell.net. So D I S. I can't spell my own name. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Like I said, we'll see what's good. Human. So D I S D R E T S W O R L D dot net. Um, as well as um, what else? We have this where you can find all our other social media handles. The main social media we're on right now is Facebook. You can find us at Third Eye, spelled T H three R D L L C E Y E. Third Eye spelled T H R excuse me T H three R D E Y E by the way for anybody out there is wondering. Um, uh, what else? Okay, so and then let me just ask. So, what are some tips that you would give to a writer that's thinking about publishing a book? I know one you threw out there was to do that market research to discover yeah, your so like target said, audience. You uh, it, like in order to be the best, you gotta do things that your opponent won't do. So take mm -hmm. yourself. First of all, my that's my rule that I have for myself. Like I said before, I was the author, I was the business owner, and I still am. Okay. And so and my advice is take in order to want people to take you serious, you take yourself serious first. Definitely. Okay. Homework, do your research. Um, don't let anybody play with you. So copyright yourself and your work. Definitely. Uh, and, and so it and. That, that comes with, like I said, manifest plan prepares. So I try to practice what I preach. And so with that being said, planning and preparing is very, all three are important. Yes. And that's what it's going to take to, to make that, that dream a reality. And so you can manifest all you want. That's the faith part of it. The planning and preparing is the work. They say faith without work is dead. Definitely. So plan and prepare manifestation the manifest part of it is the faith the planning prepare is the work of it okay and so when you're planning and preparing for it take it serious do all that you can before you dive into something that's that's beneath that's beyond me deep and that you can't you know unring the bell okay <laughs> when it comes to money you know right. and making sure that you have things on paper when it comes to that and the people that you work with publishers right. Your, your, uh, anybody that you work with that, that, that has hands in this project, um, make sure you do your research on them before you, you go into business with them. Definitely. Um, I did before I, I reached out to anybody in the publisher. I went and copy written my manuscript. I made sure, you know, before I showed it to anybody. Yeah, that you did that. Sign, make, sure, make sure they sign NDAs. If, you, if you're just in a writing section of it and you, um, you haven't published yet, but you want to get people reviewed. I made all of my test uh, audience, sample audience, before they uh, read the manuscript, I made them sign in the age. And so, Definitely. You know, and then they read it, and then they gave their opinion, and then I took that opinion, and they used it in my sample pool. Okay. So, like that, just 
take yourself seriously. This is not just food writing. Sure. If anything you do, and even specifically as with writing, make mm-hmm. sure you just, you know, it's not going to have those days to where you want to give up and, you, you know, of course you get writer's block, but like that song goes, keep swimming, keep swimming, just keep You got to be consistent, like, right? Yeah, and I always say so that. that. <laughs> and eventually, little by little, Right, piece by piece, and eventually at the end, you will have a finished. It's got a big product, a finished product, right? Those little, those small wins, they move you forward. That's one thing that I like to constantly remind people. So, just go ahead and tell us are there any future projects that you would like us to know about, and then just leave us with your social media. So, for the next couple of months, with the book coming out, we're going to do the book launch. Um, Also, I'm looking at doing a book tour okay. however with everything going on with COVID it just all ties into that and so but it is my hope and prayer that we can get a book tour started next year okay. I'm hoping that sometime next semester like I really would love to hit up um, the east coast line along uh, visiting you know the southern states sure uh, yes uh, HBCUs uh, with HBCUs and uh, other universities uh, we have 35 universities and 15 prospective states that we'd like to okay. see. And so, you know, if it's positive, if it's meant to be, you know, in new season, we'll, we'll definitely hit that up and then come out to your city and if it's you, you definitely can make up and do another show. Definitely. Um, and I would definitely so have another project going on. Um, this is just, like I said, this is my first book. Okay. Um, that first book, and, and I just wanted to make sure it's that attention grab. Usually, with the first book, people want to write about themselves and their story, and, and it's okay, but the honest truth of it, don't nobody care. Because <laughs> everybody has a story. That's where you do the research to figure out what your target audience yeah. is. <laughs> and so, you know, like I said, if you want your first book to be a number one bestseller, you definitely want to do your research and make sure you write it that's going to get something, somebody, their attention, and right. it's something that's that everybody can relate to and cares about. So that's also in the buy side we give you that you're trying to write that, even if it's not a bestseller, if you're just trying to do good in book sales, write something that's an attention grabber and something that's Definitely. like universal issue, like systemic racism sure. and, or, or and such, you know, it doesn't just have to be with systemic mm-hmm. racism. But going back into more promotion of the book and why I've written the book, speaking of systemic racism, you know, and with the death of George Floyd and white, white you know, why I think it, you know, it happened and occurred. It, it was unfortunate that it did, but, you know, I don't want to say it was necessary. It definitely wasn't necessary, but, you know, look at what's come of it, if you will. Definitely. You know, it's like the in the till of our time, if you will. It woke everybody's sure. eye up and seeing that 14 year old boy mutilated body in that casket. And for the world today to see a man die on Facebook Live. Eight, uh, of agonizing pain for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Um, um, that, that was just, you know, the root of it. And so with this book, I hope not only to just, you know, stimulate that, that conversation, but promote, you know, systemic change, you know, and help others think, you know, what if this was you in this situation? What if this happened Definitely. to your ancestors? What if this was still going on to your people in your community? Then right. what okay? And if not, why it's okay for it to happen to black people and not, not, and not just white people. And so with my, it is my hope and prayer it may not happen with this generation, but what if it happens for the next? What if this is a generation that, you know, plans to see? And so, okay. what if? But again, check it out. It's out and about. Uh, definitely on my website, you know, differenceworld.net. Again, spell D-I-F-E-R-N-S. Excuse me. dot net. And uh, it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble as well. And, and peace and blessings to you, Queen. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate the opportunity. Thank you well, thank to everybody you. out there listening and hearing my words. You know, remember, just manifest, plan, and prepare for what it is that you want in life. And we can come to you, no doubt about it. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you joining us tonight and having this very different conversation that I think um, is necessary, you know, to get things from a different perspective. Um, And then just to hear about your background and how you were able to uh, you were able to move forward from everything that you went through in life and and come out, come out on top. And, you know, like you said, you're still healing. You're doing the work to get to where you want to be. 
um healing is a it's a journey it's a never-ending journey so just keep doing the work um make sure you guys go and check out different book on amazon barnes and noble and then also on her website and then just leave us with your social your social handle one more time uh oh well facebook handle is dip the third eye no sorry third llc so t-h-3-r-d-l-l-c like i'm sorry i don't have my notepad in front of me so i'm just <laughs> So I do apologize about that. You're um, fine. You're fine. Again, we'll make sure that we put the link in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. But thank you guys so much again. You know, different world. Come and learn. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview with the the host, Miss Juanita of Grace for Purpose podcast. Be sure to check her out on all your um wherever you get to your podcast platforms. I know it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, check her out, Grace for Purpose, as well as her link is in the bio uh, under the description. So make sure you guys check out her uh, podcast. And she's a dope lady. I appreciate her for having me on her show. So big shout out to Miss Juanita for having me on her podcast, Grace for Purpose. Um, as you guys listened in and seen that we, we were talking about, you know, the conversations, you know, that needed to be had in society, especially talking about, you know, systemic racism, mental health awareness you know um with my book here it is you know you know i always do it (laughs) what if a controversial paradigm shift you know we talked about you know those issues you know systemic racism and you know what if the shoe was on the other foot and so you know with my new book what if it details that you know it talks about the controversial deaths and events that have occurred in america you know within the four main paradigm shifts you know historical political precedent and hypothetical um and if you want your copy head on over to my website differenceworld.net and get it uh you can also go get it at amazon.com if you feel more comfortable but i'm gonna be real you're gonna pay a higher price if that's the case um (laughs) so go on over to my website differenceworld.net and you can get your copy there um but what else uh earlier this week i posted my video uh mlk uh day video hope you guys enjoy watching that and looking at that and um, my homage you know to dr mlk in regards to my book (laughs) i uh have included him as well um you know we have a paradigm dedicated him dedicated to him called lorraine on the membrane so make sure you guys go and cop the book as well as look at the video on that and share it with others um what else we got going on you guys um next video i got coming up i'm going to share with you guys a travel vlog video um my trip to Panama, I think that's the one I got coming up. I'm working on uh, Colombia right now. I call it Colombia. I know it's not how you pronounce it, but it's how I call, how I call it Colombia. Um, so we're working on that now, um, and I'll get that posted for you guys next week. But Panama is next, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. But for this video, don't forget to like, share, sc- subscribe, and comment on it, you guys. I do appreciate you guys' interaction. Let me know you know, your opinions and what you guys think and what you guys want to see next. So I do appreciate the interaction with you all. Um, it, it helps keep me going and lets me know, you know, what I'm doing. I don't care who doesn't like it. It's always going to be somebody out there, you know, who condones what you're doing. Like I said, uh, one thing I learned from number 45 is, you know, you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. And so with that being said, I'm not worried about those who don't like, you know, what I'm talking about with my book. They think it's just a waste of time or they see it as, you know, me trying to ruffle feathers and rub people the wrong, wrong way and, and say that, you know, I've heard some people claim online that um, uh, it can be seen as a tool with the black community to be used against, you know, to, to uprise against, you know, the white community. And, and no, it's not. It's not that at all. My book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is a book, like I said, just strictly, you know, written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism and injustice in America within the African-American community. And a lot of these issues, a lot of white folks are not going to like what I'm saying and what it's showing. It's going to piss a lot of people off for sure. But one thing about it, once your bell has been rung, you can't unring it. So with that being said, I'm not worried about those naysayers. I'm going to go where I'm celebrated and not where I'm tolerated. Like, number 45, you know, this man, he, you know, spent four years in office and even afterwards, you know, causing all that chaos. You know, he still has 75 million plus, you know, U.S. American adults, you know, condoning his behavior. You know, that's 25 percent of the U.S. adult population still, you know, riding for this man, you know, no matter what. And so that shows me, you know, no matter what you're about in life, what you stand for. 
what product you're selling to the public, it's always going to be somebody that's going to buy it. So <laughs> do you, because <laughs> I'm a damn show do me. Um, and with that being said, everybody, I hope you guys are enjoying, you know, yourself, you know, you, you doing a little self inventory, you doing what's best for you, you manifesting, planning and preparing for whatever it is that you are destined for in life. You know, like I said, you know, 2022, you either on that come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. For me, I'm on that come up. You know, this is a year, you know, I'm just grinding and grinding and grinding and letting my work speak for itself. There's no more talking about it, just being about it. And so I know I ain't the only one out there. And so, you know, those out there who feel me and understand where I'm coming from, you know, they're going out there and get it as well. And so with that being said, everybody, thank y'all so much for listening in. And I hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe and share the video with others. And, you know, if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely drop it below and um, keep it going from there. Don't forget whatever it is in life that you want. You got to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Difference world. Come and learn. Peace. <laughs> I be tripping sometimes, y'all. Don't pay me on mine. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustrations. What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author different 